Paramedics in Canada, Wikipedia article audio. A paramedic is a healthcare professional, providing pre-hospital assessment and medical care to people with acute illnesses or injuries. In Canada, the title paramedic generally refers to those who work on land ambulances or air ambulances providing paramedic services. Paramedics are increasingly being utilized in emergency rooms by providing patient care in collaboration with physicians, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, registered nurses, registered practical nurses and registered respiratory therapists. Increasingly in Canada, paramedics are actively pursuing self-regulation. Paramedic suicides are on the rise in Canada. Between April 2014 to April 2015 there were 35 suicides, and between January and April 2015, there were 7 reported suicides. Paramedics see their patients at their worst, which can have long-lasting effects and may result in PTSD and depression. Because paramedics are frontline health care providers, there is stigma that paramedics should not show emotion or even react to traumatic situations. Training Types of paramedics Provincial variations on the National Occupational Competency Profile Emergency Medical Responder Primary Care Paramedic Advanced Care Paramedic Specialized Paramedics Critical Care Paramedic Tactical Paramedic Community Paramedic Incident Response Paramedic Paramedic Specialist Infant Transport Team Paramedic Medical Direction and Oversight Professional Environment Salary and Employment Paramedic Education, or the Study of Paramedicine in Canada, is an intensive academic program of theory and clinical experience which varies from province to province. For example, the primary care paramedic program may be 8 months, 11 months in Manitoba and 2 years to 4 years in Ontario. Training as an advanced care paramedic requires that the student be first registered as a primary care paramedic. Eligibility for ACP training varies from immediate entry following PCP registration to a mandatory period of experience working as a PCP for usually one to three years. The length of time required to complete ACP training also varies between provinces and it is generally inversely related to the length of time required to have completed the prerequisite PCP training. Shorter programs build upon the education already learned in a two-year PCP training program, while longer college programs typically cater to PCP who graduated from shorter PCP programs. Thus, while there is continual debate on the merits of longer or shorter PCP programs, in common, ACPs across Canada will generally have completed approximately three years of intensive formal education, inclusive of didactic study and clinical placements. There are two Bachelor of Health Science in Paramedicine degrees currently available in Canada and becoming the standard of paramedic education. This would be comparable to when nursing moved from the college-based program to the collaborative or university-based program in Canada. These programs are often offered through partnerships between Canadian universities and colleges, blending vocational training with higher education. The accreditation of paramedic educational programs in Canada also varies from province to province. The Canadian Medical Association's Committee on Conjoint Accreditation offers the most comprehensive and best known system of national accreditation. Their accreditation model is an independent body, 
and draws from the National Occupational Competency Profile as the benchmark document that details the knowledge, skills, and abilities outcomes that must be possessed by practitioners of each respective level of paramedic practice. In Canada the scope of practice of paramedics is described by the National Occupational Competency Profile for Paramedics document developed by the Paramedic Association of Canada with financial support from the Government of Canada. The NOCP outlines four provider levels, emergency medical responder, primary care paramedic, advanced care paramedic, and critical care paramedic. Of considerable relevance to understanding the nature of Canadian paramedic practice, the reader must appreciate the considerable degree of interprovincial variation. Although a national consensus identifies certain knowledge, skills, and abilities as being most synonymous with a given level of paramedic practice, each province retains ultimate authority in legislating the actual administration and delivery of emergency medical services within its own borders. For this reason, any discussion of paramedic practice in Canada is necessarily broad, and general. Specific regulatory frameworks and questions related to paramedic practice can only definitively be answered by consulting relevant provincial legislation although provincial paramedic associations may often offer a simpler overview of this topic when it is restricted to a province-by-province -province basis. Regulatory frameworks vary from province to province, and include direct government regulation to professional self-regulating bodies, such as the Alberta College of Paramedics. Though the title of paramedic is a generic description of a category of practitioners, provincial variability in regulatory methods accounts for ongoing differences in actual titles that are ascribed to different levels of practitioners. For example, the province of British Columbia is the only province that uses the title Infant Transport Team Paramedic, or ITT Paramedic for PCPs who have received additional critical care training for pediatric, neonatal, and high-risk obstetric emergencies. All provinces, however, have moved to standard titles, or have at least recognized the NOCP document as a benchmark document to permit interprovincial labor mobility of practitioners, regardless of how titles are specifically regulated within their own provincial systems. Under the new NOCP most providers that work in ambulances will be identified as paramedics The most prevalent level of emergency pre-hospital care is that which is provided by the emergency medical responder. This is a level of practice recognized under the National Occupational Competency Profile. As a group, EMRs staff rural ambulance stations, internal emergency team and institution, community volunteer ambulance services, industrial ambulances, or mobile treatment centers, and for many small communities, without this level of certification, the operation of a much-needed small community ambulance system might not be possible. EMRs working as first responders in fire departments, police departments, and institutions across Canada contribute an important role in the chain of survival. It is a level of practice generally consistent with few acts beyond advanced first aid including the use and interpretation of a pulse oximeter, use and interpretation of a glucometer, blood pressure assessment by auscultation and palpation, administration of the following oral, sublingual, or inhaled medications and intravenous lines without medications or blood products, antianginal, antihypoglycemic agent, analgesia, platelet inhibitors, and the use of automated external defibrillation, which is still a regulated medical act in Canada, although one which is increasingly delegated to the general public. Primary care paramedics are the entry level of paramedic practice in most Canadian provinces. 
The scope of practice includes performing semi-automated external defibrillation, oxygen administration, vascular access, cardiac monitoring such as lead-2 interpretation and 12-lead acquisition, and administration of symptom relief medications for a variety of emergency medical conditions. In addition, some services have started implementing non-opiate medications so that primary care paramedics can treat patients that require pain management. These medications include Ketorolac, Acetaminophen, and Ibuprofen. PCPs can also administer naloxone for suspected opiate overdose, performing trauma immobilization, including cervical immobilization, and other basic medical care. PCPs may also receive additional training in order to perform certain skills that are normally in the scope of practice of ACPs, such as interpretation or transmission of a 12-lead ECG. This is regulated both provincially and locally, and ordinarily entails an aspect of medical oversight by a specific body or group of physicians. This is often referred to as medical control and is the role played by a base hospital. The advanced care paramedic is a level of practitioner that is in high demand by many services across Canada. However, still not all provinces and jurisdictions have ACPs. The ACP typically carries approximately 20 different medications, although the number and type of medications may vary substantially from region to region. ACPs perform advanced airway management including intubation, surgical airways, intravenous therapy, place external jugular four lines, perform needle thoracostomy, perform and interpret 12-lead ECGs, perform synchronized and chemical cardioversion, transcutaneous pacing, perform obstetrical assessments, and provide pharmacological pain relief for various conditions. Several sites in Canada have adopted pre-hospital fibrinolytics and rapid sequence induction, and pre-hospital medical research has permitted a great number of variations in the scope of practice for ACPs. Current programs include providing ACPs with discretionary direct 24-hour access to PCI labs, bypassing the emergency department, and representing a fundamental change in both the way that patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarctions are treated, but also profoundly affecting survival rates. As well as bypassing a closer hospitals to get an identified stroke patient to a stroke center. Training for specialization as a paramedic is most often provided by employers who select paramedics that have gone through an internal competition. There are very few specialization education programs open to the public currently. An exception being STARS Critical Care and Transport Medicine Academy, offered jointly by STARS Air Ambulance and the University of Calgary. Most specializations require the applicant to already be an experienced advanced care paramedic. Critical care paramedics' expertise focus on critical and ICU level care, stabilizing and transporting patients from smaller hospitals with less available resources to tertiary care, and regional medical programs into other hospitals that can provide a higher level of care. CCPs generally work with an ACP, registered nurse, physician, or another CCP. Sometimes ad hoc teams, with multiple practitioners are assembled for certain patients. CCPs are able to provide all of the care that PCPs and ACPs provide. In addition to this they are trained for other skills such as medication infusion pumps, mechanical ventilation and arterial line monitoring. CCPs often work in fixed and rotary wing aircraft when the weather permits and staff are available, but systems such as the Toronto M's critical care transport program work in land ambulances. Orange Transport operates both land and aircraft in Ontario. 
In British Columbia, CCPs work primarily in aircraft with a dedicated critical care transport crew in several cities for long distance slash high acuity transfers and as regular CCP street crews who may do major trauma calls or performs medevacs when necessary. Across the prairies, STARS Shock Trauma Air Rescue Society uses rotary wing aircraft to reach many in isolated communities and traumatic situations for faster response time than by ground ambulance. In Saskatchewan they also use fixed wing air ambulances. The service, called Lifeguard, can respond a greater distance and to more northern communities than STARS. SASK Air Ambulance Service was the first non-military air ambulance service in the world. These air ambulances are crewed by flight nurses and CCPs. Tactical paramedics are specialized paramedics that undergo additional training to allow them to perform their usual task in a high-risk and dangerous scenario. Some will be trained to handle weapons repel from buildings and other skills needed to work alongside tactical police units. These paramedics will be required to wear protective gear but are unarmed. The newest level slash role for paramedics in Canada, community paramedics work in clinics, hospitals, and in patients' homes. They provide immediate or scheduled primary, urgent, and specialized health care to vulnerable patient populations by collaborating with other health care providers, conducting assessments, treating, and doing slash ordering tests. Diagnostics provided by community paramedics, specimen collection, 12 15th lead ECGs, vital signs, and facilitate transports for diagnostic imaging. Treatments provided by community paramedics, CVC and for rehydration, blood transfusions, urinary catheterization, wound closure and care, oxygen and nebulizer therapy. 4 slash sq slash im slash po slash port slash pick medication administration and coordination of community services a type of specialization in alberta metro areas irps receive intensive training including toxicology hazmat chemistry national fire protection association hazmat awareness and operations certifications as well as three weeks of CBRNE training, antidote, medical countermeasures, MCI and, protective equipment training. For day-to-day -day operations, IRPs respond to hazmat and toxicology-related incidents. They carry a wider range of medications than advanced care paramedics and more protective equipment, allowing them to better treat poisoning slash overdoses and work closely with firefighters and hazmat technicians. ACPs and CCPs in British Columbia that provide unseen technical support for high-risk situations, mass and complex patient events as well as telephone support to paramedics and patients. Typically work in solo response vehicles in metro areas or in dispatch centers. Only a designation in British Columbia, ITT paramedics are specially trained ALS paramedics who undergo extra training to provide emergency medical care for BC pediatric, neonatal, and high-risk obstetrics patients while en route to specialized care units in hospitals throughout British Columbia, the Yukon Territories, other parts of Canada and the United States as required. The ITT is the only specialized paramedic team in the world who serves three distinct patient groups. In some of Canada, paramedics do not work under their own medical license. Some exceptions are in British Columbia, New Brunswick, Saskatchewan, and Alberta where each paramedic regardless of level, has their own license to practice. In Ontario, Paramedics are permitted to perform regulated medical acts by the process of delegation.
This means that one medical doctor has become familiar with the individual paramedic and then has delegated authority to that paramedic which allows them to perform specific regulated medical act under defined situations. The scope of practice for the paramedic is defined in paramedic protocols. These protocols specify which skill and the conditions required for the paramedic to act. Each protocol is signed by the medical director. Medical directors are generally ER physicians who work in a hospital associated with the paramedic service. The relationship between this hospital is formalized through legal agreements. Other physicians in the base hospital who are allowed to give direct orders to paramedics that exceed their protocols are referred to as delegating physicians. These physicians are usually ER physicians. Some Canadian paramedics are moving towards the status of self-regulated health professionals with paramedics forming their own professional colleges in much the same manner as nurses and other health professions. These organizations are responsible to the government for the examination and licensing of practitioners, the establishment of standards of practice, the investigation of public complaints against members, and the disciplining of members. They are also required to advise the government on all issues and legislation related to the practice of their members. Following the example of their British colleagues, colleges or associations have been established in Alberta, Saskatchewan, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia, with Ontario actively moving towards this type of legislation. Paramedics have a close relationship with the physicians who grant paramedics the legal right to practice their profession with a regulated paramedic service. Some systems in Canada are transitioning to a self-regulated organization, where medical authority derives directly from legislation and self-regulation rather than the approval of a medical doctor. Also, because physician assistants in Canada exist primarily in the Canadian forces, the role of clinical paramedic practitioners is under serious study. Both urban and rural centres have begun utilising paramedics working in hospital on cardiac arrest teams, patient transfer teams, emergency department triage slash treatment and to facilitate faster offload times. In Halifax, NS, ACPs and PCPs work side by side with physicians in various emergency departments within the Capital District Health Authority. The responsibilities of these department paramedics varies from ER to ER within CDHA but include advanced airway stabilization, suturing, minor treatment as well as other expanded paramedic roles such as procedural sedations. They have also proven a necessary and integral member of the cardiac arrest and trauma teams. PCPs have been employed by CDHA since the early 1990s to perform triage assessments. Paramedics often work long hours, with a variety of 8, 10, 12 and 14 hour shifts. In some areas, however, 24 and even 96 hour shifts are not unusual. Salary and benefits are generally commensurate with the level of education and certification, though often less than the salary expectations of police officers and firefighters. This incongruity is often argued as being unfair, especially in light of the relative level of responsibility a paramedic may have for acting decisively and without having direct supervision. However, Many paramedics consider their career to offer intangible benefits and reported job satisfaction is generally high. Due to the challenging working conditions, paramedics, similarly to other first responders, are at a greatly increased risk to develop post-traumatic stress disorder as compared to the general population. Paramedics in Canada generally work only as paramedics but occasionally are cross-trained as firefighters, security contractor, search and rescue or law enforcement officers, 
and most are paid full or part-time professionals. In the first quarter of 2005, paramedics were granted status federally as a public safety occupation which means that paramedics are now eligible for early retirement, as are police officers and firefighters. Many EMS agencies run a full range of paramedic specialty squads including, marine medics, bike medics, first response medics, tactical ERT and CCU medics, CBRNE medics and USAR medics and finally no hurt medics. Paramedic wages in Canada vary depending on province and experience. Paramedics in Ontario in such regions or cities as Ottawa, Toronto, Peel Region, or Durham, will have an annual salary starting from $70,000 to $90,000 as a primary care paramedic. An advanced care paramedic salary can on average range from $80,000 to $100,000, and critical care paramedics range from $100,000 to $135,000. Education background, experience, and level of practice all are contributing factors to which salary is established.